talk about teaching geography in the 21st century and what we're going to do in weeks zero and one. Now, I call it week zero because it's sort of an introductory week. Now, you've probably seen this in the past where we want to network with each other. Well, there's an extra twist on the what we'll do on the way we'll do that in the teaching geography course because I want to get us into web maps and all the power that they provide us as educators. What we're going to do is you're going to go to a live web mapping service. You're going to enter your uh, a little bit of data about yourself, but you're also going to put your point on the live web map. And as you do so, you'll think about several things. One, you can see each other's um, point location. Number two, on a live web map. So it's kind of like citizen science in action. It's think about your students actually creating a web map and contributing pH in streams or tree height and tree species on your campus or invasive weeds in a section of a vacant lot in town or historical homes in your community or traffic counts or pedestrian counts on certain intersections. So this ability to do live web mapping is really quite powerful and I want to introduce you to it right away in our course. And it will also provide us with a nice uh, way of thinking spatially about where your colleagues are located in the course. We're also going to think about privacy issues. Did you put your point on your exact house? Did you put it on your school? Did you put it somewhere in your community? And what does that mean for opportunities to teach about location privacy in our world and in our geography and STEM courses? Now, getting into week one, the core content, our, our goals are really good at, going to be as follows. Understand the core of what geography is, content knowledge, skills, and spatial perspective. Those three things, content knowledge, skills, and perspective, are going to run throughout our course. Also, number two, we're going to begin to identify and discuss key geographic issues and themes from a spatial perspective. Three, understand what the geographic perspective is and what spatial thinking is. Fourth, understand relationships between ecoregions, population density, growth rates, and fertility rates around the world. Fifth, understand the demographic transition model. Sixth, begin to identify and use web mapping tools to effectively teach geography. Seventh, understand population change from global scale to your local community. That's a lot of goals, uh, but each one will be short and sweet, and I hope it gives you a good feeling for the course. So our specific learning activities are as follows. We're going to watch a recorded video on this week's topics. That's this one right here. We're going to have short readings on what geography is, what spatial thinking is, and demography. Number three, we're going to use Gapminder to understand global population and demographic trends over space and over time. Fourth, we're going to use something called Show Mapping Worlds, which allows us to create cartograms to understand global demographic variables. Fifth, we're going to do some hands-on investigation of ecoregions of the world and world demographic data using population density and choropleth maps. And number six, we're going to use ArcGIS Online to investigate changes in population in the USA by state, county, census tract, and block group. All right, so in our discussion boards, we'll have a reflection on our readings, and we'll also have a discussion board on where you reflect on your hands-on activities. We're going to have a short quiz about all these things and um, we're gonna just have a great time thanks for being here